pessoal, uh, o que eu gostaria de passar para vocês é o seguinte, é uma matéria que eu acabou um amigo aqui me enviando, eu achei muito legal. Então eu estou querendo sempre que eu, as pessoas que me mandam alguma coisa interessante, eu passo para vocês. Então eu tenho aquela sensibilidade de ver que eu acho que é alguma coisa que todos devem saber. Hoje eu acho que toda informação ela é importante para o ser humano crescer. Você não pode desprezar determinadas coisas. Você não pode desprezar determinadas histórias que às vezes alguma pessoa vem te contar. O que eu tenho notado na, na minha vida até hoje, eu acho que todo mundo é um contatado. Né? Todo mundo tem um contato com alguém, tem um contato com alguma coisa fora de nós, fora da nossa ordem aqui, terrestre, né? que a gente subentende. Né? Porque a nossa vida não é só materialidade. Né? Existe todo um tempo um aparato acredito, fantástico, é, para que possa ver a nossa existência aqui nesse planeta. Quando a gente começa a pensar em torno disso, a gente vê o quanto é grandioso é tudo isso. O quanto é legal a gente poder estar tá participando no mundo onde o esclarecimento está dia a dia nos colocando na cabeça determinadas informações, trazendo novidades, trazendo é, mistérios, coisas misteriosas. Porque existem tantas coisas hoje, gente, em termos assim, misteriosos, que a gente não consegue entender. In the beginning was the Logos, the Big Bang, the primordial Om. Big Bang Theory says that the physical universe spiraled out of an unimaginably hot and dense single point called a singularity, billions of times smaller than the head of a pin. It does not say why or how. The more mysterious something is, the more we take for granted that we understand it. It was thought that eventually gravity would either slow the expansion or contract the universe in a big crunch. However, images from the Hubble Space Telescope show that the universe's expansion seems to be actually accelerating, expanding faster and faster as it grows out of the Big Bang. Somehow, there is more mass in the universe than physics predicted. To account for the missing mass, physicists now say that the universe consists of only 4% atomic matter, or what we consider normal matter. 23% of the universe is dark matter, and 73% is dark energy, what we previously thought of as empty space. It is like an invisible nervous system that runs throughout the universe, connecting all things. The ancient Vedic teachers taught Nada Brahma, the universe is vibration. The vibratory field is at the root of all true spiritual experience and scientific investigation. It is the same field of energy that saints, Buddhas, yogis, mystics, priests, shamans and seers have observed by looking within themselves. It has been called Akasha, the primordial Om. Indra's net of jewels, the music of the spheres, and a thousand other names throughout history. It is the common root of all religions. And the link between our inner worlds and our outer worlds. In Mahayana Buddhism in the 3rd century, they described a cosmology not unlike the most advanced physics of modern day. Indra's net of jewels is a metaphor used to describe a much older Vedic teaching, which illustrates the way the fabric of the universe is woven together. 
Indra, the king of the gods, gave birth to the sun and moves the winds and the waters. Imagine a spider web that extends into all dimensions. The web is made up of dewdrops, and every drop contains the reflection of all the other water drops. And in each reflected dewdrop, you will find the reflections of all the other droplets, the entire web in that reflection, and so on to infinity. Indra's web could be described as a holographic universe, where even the smallest stream of light contains the complete pattern of the whole. The Serbian-American scientist Nikolai Tesla is sometimes referred to as the man who invented the 20th century. Tesla was responsible for discovering alternating current electricity and many other creations that are now part of everyday life. Because of his interest in the ancient Vedic traditions, Tesla was in a unique position to understand science through both an Eastern and Western model. Like all great scientists, Tesla looked deeply into the mysteries of the outer world but he also looked deeply within himself. Like the ancient yogis, Tesla used the term Akasha to describe the etheric field that extends throughout all things. Tesla studied with Swami Vivekananda, a yogi who brought the ancient teachings of India to the West. In the Vedic teachings, Akasha is space itself, the space that the other elements fill which exists simultaneously with vibration. The two are inseparable. Akasha is yin to prana's yang. A modern concept that can help us to conceptualize Akasha, or the primary substance, is the idea of fractals. It wasn't until the 1980s that advances in computers allowed us to actually visualize and reproduce mathematically the patterns in nature. The term fractal was coined in 1980 by mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot, who studied certain simple mathematical equations that, when they are repeated, produce an unending array of changing mathematical or geometrical forms within a limited framework. They are limited, but at the same time, infinite. A fractal is a rough geometric shape that can be split into parts, each of which is at least approximately a reduced size copy of the whole pattern, a property called self-similarity. Mandelbrot's fractals have been called the thumbprint of God. You are seeing artwork generated by nature itself. If you turn the Mandelbrot figure a certain way, it looks sort of like a Hindu deity or Buddha. This figure has been termed the Buddha Bro figure. If you look at some forms of ancient art and architecture, you will see that humans have long associated beauty and the sacred with fractal patterns. Infinitely complex, yet every part contains the seed to recreate the whole. Fractals have changed mathematicians' views of the universe and how it operates. With each new level of magnification, there are differences from the original. Constant change and transformation occurs as we traverse from one level of fractal detail to another. This transformation is the cosmic spiral, the embedded intelligence of the matrix of time-space.
Fractals are inherently chaotic, full of noise and order. When our minds recognize or define a pattern, we focus on it, as if it is a thing. We try to find the patterns we see as beautiful, but in order to hold the pattern in our minds, we must push away the rest of the fractal. To comprehend a fractal with the senses is to limit its movement. All energy in the universe is neutral, timeless, dimensionless. Our own creativity and capacity for pattern recognition is the link between the microcosm and macrocosm, the timeless world of waves and the solid world of things. Observation is an act of creation through limitations inherent in thinking. We are creating the illusion of solidity, of things by labeling, by naming. The philosopher Kierkegaard said, If you name me, you negate me. By giving me a name, a label, you negate all of the other things I could possibly be. You lock the particle into being a thing by pinning it down, naming it. But at the same time, you are creating it, defining it to exist. Creativity is our highest nature. With the creation of things comes time, which is what creates the illusion of solidity. Einstein was the first scientist to realize that what we think of as empty space is not nothing. It has properties. And intrinsic to the nature of space is nearly unfathomable amounts of energy. The renowned physicist Richard Feynman once said, There is enough energy in a single cubic meter of space to boil all the oceans in the world. Advanced meditators know that in the stillness lies the greatest power. The Buddha had yet another term for the primary substance, what he termed kalapas, which are like tiny particles or wavelets that are arising and passing away trillions of times per second. Reality is, in this sense, like a series of frames in a holographic film camera, moving quickly so as to create the illusion of continuity. When consciousness becomes perfectly still, the illusion is understood, because it is consciousness itself that drives the illusion. Tá? Eu acho que isso é muito importante. Tá um recadinho que o canal de Dineo aqui de uma forma sempre espontânea, está procurando deixar aqui. Eu espero que vocês deixem seus comentários e quem sabe oportunamente. Então eu agradeço a todos, espero que vocês tenham gostado. Procure comentar, né? procure deixar um comentário, deixe seu like. É, procure também, quem não conhece aqui o canal, procure é, se inscrever no canal. E eu só posso agradecer, tá bom? Então gente, um abraço e tudo de bom. E que eu deixo aqui um beijo no coração de cada um de vocês, ok? Tchau!